Hello YouTube. Today I'm on day three of installing this solar um, PV project. Um, I have another array of rails and um, equipment to install today. So um, I'm showing you, this is the plan that I have. Um, obviously the first step in every project like this is to do all the planning. So today I'm gonna be installing the Iron Ridge Flash Foot 2 flashings um, right here on the roof. The plan is to have 10 of these. Those are the boxes. So every one of these boxes is the flash foot two flashings that will go into, um, into install on the roof. Um, this array here is a little interesting because I have a slanted, a slant in the, uh, in the roof. So, that's why I have four on the top row and then two on the bottom. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that as long as you can fit it and have enough clearance between the edge of the solar panel um, and the roof, then there's no problem. So um, I have a preliminary idea of where I believe the uh, trusses are gonna be. That's that yellow line. So that's kind of roughly where I think they're gonna go. But obviously when you go out and start measuring, there's almost always going to be uh, a, a discrepancy of some sort. So I believe this is kind of where they're gonna go. The way I have my panels laid out, I need to, these numbers on the left, that's where I intend to drill into the roof to install the bolts for the flash foot twos. So I have initial measurements here, roughly 22, 69, 147, two rows, so two racks each. Um, but usually when you go out and take a look and see where your shingles are. I've got architectural shingles like look like, look like this. Um, there's almost always gonna be adjustments so you don't end up having the, the, the flashings actually overlap. You don't want them to overlap the edge of a shingle. You want them to be within the shingle. So I'm gonna lay out my tape measure and take a look and see where that those numbers are relative to the way the shingles are laid out. So one thing that's common to these shingles, those architecture shingles, is that the horizontal lines actually do go and run all the way across a roof. But you never want to go off of those lines, the vertical lines, that's just the way the shingle looks. The horizontal lines are pretty much very uh, consistent across the um, side of the, the, the edge of the roof, the, 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 the horizontal side of the roof. So in my case, my first line right here is the 147 inch. So looking at where that's gonna fall, that's right there next to the edge of this shingle. You don't want your flash foot twos to be installed like this. That means I'm going to have to cut a piece in the shingle. You don't want to do that. So what you end up doing is you simply offset. There's every panel has a range. Um, every solar panel has a range. Within a panel, there's a range where you could actually um, attach the panel to the rail. Um, every manufacturer has different specs, etc. In my case. Um, I've got a range of about seven inches. So I have a little bit of flexibility. In my original plan, the rails themselves were set to be right in the middle of that seven inch uh, range where I can attach the panel to the rail. So I did it that way because I knew I was gonna end up having to make an offset. So if the 147 is the middle of the range, I have roughly three and a half inches off from there to move my flashing. So I can move it up or I can move it down. If I move it up, then the distance between the top of, of the edge of the panel to the rail is gonna be less. If I move it down, it's gonna be more. So I like to actually move it a little bit uh, towards the center of the panel. So in this case, I'm going to be Instead of drilling into the 147 inch horizontal line, I'm going to offset it down a little bit. 
up to three and a half inches. If I go up to three and a half inches, I should be fine. So, looks like instead of the 147, I'll drop it down to about the 145. What that's gonna let me do is, um, or the 144 and a half. What that lets me do is, makes the flashing not overlap the edge of the shingle, makes the area right here where you drill the bolt or you screw the bolt in, you drill and then you screw the bolt in. That isn't gonna fall on an edge either. And then also really helps if that distance, that space between the top of the flashing and the edge of the third shingle, if that's minimal, that means you don't have to uh, go under the shingle as much and you can sometimes actually avoid having to take out a um, a nail a shingle nail so instead of the 147 as I had in my original plan I'm gonna offset it by two and a half inches and go to the 144 and a half line so that's my first modification to my original plan um, like I said you always almost always have to make adjustments to the way you lay it out and that's fine as long as you fall within that range of where your solar panels have to attach to the rails you should be okay okay so I went ahead made my marking 144 and a half right there so that's where I'm gonna make a horizontal line all the way across using a chalk line because that's the exact spot where I want to be drilling holes into the roof where and those holes are going to be those are pilot holes that are going to take the bolts that'll attach the flash foot to the roof so i'm on to my next rail right here i started from the top 147 and then next one is 100 according to my so as you can see i adjusted it to 144 and a half the 100 let's see what we got so here's the 100 a little bit better it's not quite to the edge of a shingle however it's not giving me enough clearance i'm not very comfortable with this see there's a little bit of the line is the edge of the shingle is right there kind of want to offset it down a little bit and that's okay as you could as i said before um i have three and a half inches offset from where i planned these lines so in this case instead of a hundred inches now these are offsets obviously from the from the edge i've got my tape measure um lined up like that so instead of a hundred i'm actually going to offset it down by about an inch so i'm going to go to 99 inches why because now at 99 inches see those tabs on the flash foot twos they'll tell you where the exact center line is where the hole is going to go um flash foot two is going to line up to the edge of the shingle so that's fine and it's not going to go into that third tab um, as deep so you may actually be able to avoid nails that are right there so instead of 100 i'm going to offset it down by an inch and go to 99. same thing i'll make my marking 99 inches um, the edge of the roof now one thing I should mention is when you go like that when you measure it like that you want to have a consistent reference point so I picked my reference point to be the edge of the roof now that doesn't mean that's where the exact um, stud or, or rafter goes it, it doesn't matter as long as you have a consistent reference so my reference is going to be the bottom line right here my offsets are going to be from that reference line the idea is to make the horizontal line across the roof be a consistent single line and if you do that then when you drill the holes and put the bolts in to the flash footings then you know that the center line of where the bolts go is going to be consistent across the roof that way when the rail comes in, when you attach the rail to the flash foot twos, then uh, you don't have to have any bands or anything gets out of whack because they're not lined up. So a consistent horizontal line, and I'll use a chalk line, I'll show you here in a little bit.
that's gonna make it um, easy to install and you won't have any issues when you actually attach the rails.